Hello everyone, I'm ExtraCheesy87 and this is Let's Play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations Part 17. In the previous video, we almost finished the longest investigation known to man. We, are, uh, we were in the process of grilling Mr. Armstrong? Is that your name? I don't know, we're trying to figure out what Maggie's motive would have been. Well, really, it was his motive, but somehow it got passed off to Mag- Mr. Armstrong, you said that the victim had a winning lottery ticket for half a million dollars. How did you know he had something like that in the first place? The man he was listening to la radio with his earpiece. Maggie said something about that, too. The winning number was announced on the news, I think. All of a sudden, he exploded! Yes, half a million, he shouted. And the ticket? We. Oui. You had all of his tickets spread out on the table. I was so desperately in need of money, so I... Put the poison in his coffee? No, 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 no! Oh, no, you naughty man! I simply helped myself to one of his tickets. What? The victim collapsed and Maggie passed out. I thought to myself, poor Kui, pass. He had so many of them. Yeah, but only one of them was the winning ticket, right? How could you do that, Mr. Armstrong? Maggie was arrested because of you. None? This is not true. I did not take it. The ticket for half a million, I mean. Uh, but you just told us you did. You said you took a ticket. Mm, must know, my filly. It was not... That's enough. Huh? Ah! Mr. Godot! What in the heck are you doing here? I love this restaurant. It's the only place that's got good coffee. This is without a doubt the worst coffee I've ever tasted, Mr. Armstrong. He came in over coffee. Does this great for coffee? No, no bounce? Perhaps Mr. Armstrong stole one of the victim's tickets of the day in question? Well, yeah, he said it had a lot of tickets, so he probably just grabbed the wrong one. I am the airhead, Nona, just a pretty little girl who everyone is laughing at. But in that case, Maggie shouldn't be the only one under suspicion. He had the wrong ticket. What? Mr. Armstrong made off with the winning ticket's pretty neighbor. So, the ticket he took was worthless? No, I got to trade it in for this box of uh, Cracker Jacks. Not quite, he didn't win something. <laughs> a dollar. You see, I am just a pretty face. Without my looks, I have nothing. So, what happened to the winning ticket then? The one he meant to steal. Indeed, what did happen to it? I don't like spoiling myself watching trailers, so... We'll just wait and see how the movie turns out tomorrow, won't we? I'm not stalking you, you're stalking you. Uh, voila, you two, time to laugh at the pretty little airhead. Looks like I won't be needing this note anymore. Victor's note thrown into the trash! Looks like we've got a new mystery now, namely, where did the winning ticket go? I've got a bad feeling about this. Well, anyway. We can't let Maggie suffer any longer for this, and certainly not again. three more minutes but I didn't know we only had to go three more minutes plus I was dying it's been a few hours since I recorded the last video but my voice isn't as uh destroyed from that real thing the game forced me to do oh I see I guess I should have expected this Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But he was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor! Maggie! Uh, wait, wrong Maggie? Ah, just take the gumshoe! Are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger! And you! Uh, yeah? You better square this case away. Got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. With this gun. Squaring away your paperwork for your arrest. I think he's serious. 
Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? Uh, no, actually. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, of course, I got the situation under control. This is not a good time to tell them that I've been fired. So I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. If I say something that doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You got me? God damn it, this fucking Phoenix Wright dude embarrasses me again. I'm going to be so mad I might just take out this and... I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? You forgot that, uh, have you seen the questions this game asked me half the time? I can only wish. It's like 50% of the questions are like super easy. 25% are like actually really good uh, and they require a good amount of like logic and reasoning. And then 25% of the questions are just like batshit insane. Maybe it's like 50% are easy, 30% are good, 20% are batshit insane. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, your honor. Or just situations where it's like, you know, like in the last case where you had to like press the statement again after you had failed to present the other evidence or I don't really know what the criteria was for why the second press only started revealing new information after a certain point. Like, that that's an example of something that's just dumb. Bitter. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? Ah! Uh, what's wrong? Nothing, it's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, uh... You were talking to me? It was a little, well, uh, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me, that was the phony phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Our trusty? So, Mr. Godot, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you are Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for relevant testimony during this retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said. Trust me. Now then, Mr. Gazat, please summon your first witness. Let's start with the formality, shall we? Name and occupation. Witness! State your name for the court. Huh? Oh, uh, uh sorry, sir. Uh, the name's Police Department Detective. Uh, occupation, Dick Gumshoe. Other way around, Detective. Huh? I can't put my Dick Gumshoe the other way around. That's just not how biology works, sir. Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday, sir. Since yesterday? Uh, yeah, the guy who's on the initial investigation is tied up with another case now. By tied up, I mean he's in the basement. Tied up. Literally. His case is, uh, will he be able to make it out of this room alive? I hope Gumshoe has really got everything under control, for everyone's sake. Don't worry, I left a saw in the room with him. I see, so Detective Gumshoe. Would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? Yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Egg. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Inc., a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts us into the evidence. I am of death between 130 and 230. That's a pretty big gap. Hmm. Potassium cyanide poisoning. And, uh, here are the floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poison coffee was brought over to him by the, um, by the waitress. 
Waitress being the accused? No, nah, just, just a regular old waitress. Yeah. Victim died from poison and almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Gene Armstrong, the owner and chef, and a regular by the name of Mr. Victor Kudo. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Dumb detective, take up this hammer and nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Uh, yes, sir. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenn Egg, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in this coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, looks like Miss Bird might have had some kind of motive. Hmm. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you, it wasn't me. I mean, we still might threaten to pull you out and shoot you with this gun, but, um, you know, we can't be held legally responsible for that. Now, I do have to... I don't know if the part about, like, he won't accept... Yeah, they didn't use the word pressing, but, like, he had that little spiel at the start about not bringing up needless testimony. Is that, like, just flavor text? Or does that actually mean I'm going to get penalized if I press the wrong stuff? You can never tell with this game. You can never tell when it's being serious and when it's just, like, flavor. Or games, I guess I should say. It's not just this game in particular, it's all of them, but... Well, I don't remember the first game really having that problem. It never punished you for pressing, uh, statements, from what I remember, at least. Potassium cyanide. I've heard of that chemical, chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? It's, uh, well, stuff's lethal. Eat too much in your history. How much is too much? A lethal dose is 0 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. 0 0.2 grams? How much is that? Well, it's a fifth of a gram. You know when you swab your ears for earwax? Yep, about that much. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe's got an abundance of. Hmm, but the small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Some kind of a motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. You know what my golden rule is, detective. Check out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Ah, I don't get it. I'm going to throw this cup at you now. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. Ah. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. She was... They say she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning lottery ticket for half a million. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? He stole the wrong one. And is it possible Maggie stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I mean, do we have any evidence that she stole it? No. Eh, why not? Wait a minute. The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared no way implicates my client. Don't, don't laugh at me, dude. Don't, I'm HP, man. I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. 
That's the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Hmm. I could get that for myself. One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search of the defendant. What? Order, order! <laughs> He's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. Also, I'm going to penalize you for that bird pun. Awful. I better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. Okay. Well, our client did faint. Could have easily had it put on her. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say. The court will now take a quick 20-minute reset. Bailiff, how far away is the lottery cashing place? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. Do you really think there are any contradictions in this testimony? To be honest, I don't know. But Gumshi told us out in the lobby. He said we'd be forming a united front, right? How will we win the case if he doesn't throw us a line? I don't have a whole lot of opinions right now. The best I can do is gather the facts together, I guess. Okay, so I guess we go back and press those initial statements. It doesn't seem like they're going to penalize me. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said. And I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? I mean, yeah, there's some sticks in the mud out there who lie and say they didn't see Mystery Man, but Mystery Man was definitely there. There are two opinion testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I mean, why not? Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table is obscured in some way. Ha! Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee at Trace me in. That's right! I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Oh god, looks like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population? The Defendant. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that was such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Trekadoon, I've possibly overlooked a second person at the table. It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. He was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, he had one of those portable radios in his chest pocket. One of them walkie mens. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece? What should I do? Should I press? I, I mean, I guess. And what was that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How should I know? Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? I don't think we've pressed this yet. So traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid, or was it a powder? Uh, if I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. But the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. If you put pepper in coffee, I'm legally allowed to kill you. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? The, the victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Ah! 
fiends with the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press? Why not? So far, it's worked out for us, kind of. Are you absolutely certain the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? W what do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. What proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh, hey, you're right. That's what I was thinking. In case you were wondering, the last objection was for the detective there. Huh, for me? Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have time to waste, you have time to present that piece of evidence. Uh, that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Alright, fine, I'll take my pants off. Uh, <laughs> well, what piece was it again? Rude. Would I be grateful this coffee's only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Uh, the 23rd of September. This or December. Well, September. I don't. 20. Do you remember? Uh, this is the uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh, yes, it's unmistakable. There is clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. Maybe they're just not good at washing dishes. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this! For, for the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. On further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. That's enough. The facts of this case seem to be overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime which he is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. Uh, like an old man who knows the score. There is also the matter of this half a million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for the sum of money, I might even be tempted to... In the rules. I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, it's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. That stain looks like... It can't be blood, can it? Ha ha ha! It seems the star of our play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Ah, yes, the frills. Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The pocket? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. Bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? Order, order, order! The court will accept these, in evidence, these items in evidence. Has a small pocket but big stains. Or is something still bothering me, Mr. Godot? Why have you not explained the blood stain on the, to the court? It's tomato juice. Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about any blood stain. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. I'm blind. Damn it. Don't you see my face? Well, detective, can this stain really be blood? Uh, no way, sir. 
I spilled tomato ketchup on it. I'm sorry. Hey, that's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten some on her apron while taking their breakfast that day. You gotta smoke it a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Well, still like that again, I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup. Witness. Uh, I thought everyone knew what it was already. I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well, Trite, it seems you really are a phony after all. And you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Try for the quote the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. So 2.25. I mean, so far this seems to be the main thing that we have potentially to use as a weapon. Is the very large window of death. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out who he was pretty quickly and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison, and that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Nothing else missing, eh? Hmm. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one, so let the fun begin. I highly doubt this is the last cross-examination. What if the game did just end right here? Like, fucking got him. You thought you bought a full-price game? Eat our ass. There's only three chapters and the third one isn't even finished. See ya. <laughs> Thanks for the money, nerds. This game came out before there was even, like, super prevalent games media, so you wouldn't even know going in that the game was only half finished. I don't know, it's kind of a weird <laughs> hypothetical scenario there. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Oh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at him and seeds! Hey, what took you so long? I wonder if that means that he, they did try and contact earlier? At the time of death? Hmm. Seeds. It was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. I guess not even the mightiest Kadok can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. In the kitchen? It took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. Bet you would have liked to have carried out the search too. Would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that. All pretty and peaceful and defenseless. I mean, you're a professional detective gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Say the romantics for your own time, detective. All we need to know about is the investigation. No, oh, whoops, I guess I'm uh, pretty red right now, aren't I? He didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. You want to know who was became 58 cents richer after that day? <laughs> well, let's just say he might have something on his shoes, and it's maybe a little sticky. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. You could have just said a young man. 
Why not, or some kind of outlaw, why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. Wait a sec. Huh? Did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase who just types out of the court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yep, basically. In that case, how are you able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. Uh, well, we use psychic magic powers. He's so let down, he got the whole sack and shoulder and puppy eyes things going on. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glen Elk visited his doctor before he went to Trace BN. We got the victim's name for the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone? Ask about the bag. What sort of medicine was in the bag? Oh, well, uh, cyanide. Actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It's completely empty. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate, aren't you, trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? But the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, yeah, you, you nailed it, pal. Hmm. Happens to me all the time. Wake up in an alley, passed out. More money in my wallet than I had the night before. <laughs> we had a department party the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So trite, someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. A pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? No, nah, not really, no. I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue with the testimony, witness. So the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for? Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for. But wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh yeah! The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it? It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little. Except for Gumshoe. I don't find a hole in this testimony. The judge is going to hand down his verdict. No one hasn't given us anything to work with. And we can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been. I don't really get the second question here, but we'll try it. Oh, we can't ask about the medical insurance? That was just like a joke one? Hmm. I mean, we've gotten a lot of evidence. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Pocket, but big stains. Oh. 
scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Hmm. I mean, they kind of addressed that. I was thinking, like, you know, you could present... Why would he have only been called an hour later? But I don't... I feel like they kind of somewhat addressed that idea. The bag is empty. I mean, you could make an argument that, like, there should have been something in this bag. Therefore, something had gone missing. I don't know, it seems kind of thin, but... As the same thing we just did. Another 10 minutes or so before she came to. Hmm. I got no idea. And so to keep things moving, let's uh, enter trial and error mode. Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There is just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally. I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, uh, will ya? You testified that nothing else is missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. The officers recovered the medicine from the scene of the crime later. Uh, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trace BN. Where then did the medicine disappear to? You are too cool, pal. I had to activate my own boombox that I started carrying around after seeing your courtroom antics. In indeed, due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison. And the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared? The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Order! Order! Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say about that? Hmm, that's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Era Otolinjara Otten Otolarin Gological Clinic? Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from? Mr. Godot? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elk found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? And what on earth was the description he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? Mention the autopsy report if you read the fine print. Man, I can't read no fine print. All it says is dude dead. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is. It's very, very fine print. That's like three font. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trace BN. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe he would have eaten his medication. I mean, that still doesn't answer where the hell it went. I mean, he didn't apply it all at once. And even if he had the uh, 
bottle would have still been left over. It seems this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. N no, Nick, you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. He's right, but I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? I mean, I think we push it. Some might even say we push it real good. Only moments ago, Mr. Kadat made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Traspian. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know what? How about you go fuck yourself? That's what I think about your lawyer's duty. Y you know as well as I do the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems the likely a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. That's enough. Mr. Godot. Is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Well, we'll learn what the next prosecution's witness is in the next video. I'm Extra 87 Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.